This is Duke University. In North Carolina, the, play, the birthplace of SNCC, more specifically at Shaw University, no other setting was more of a haven for black power enthusiasts and radical theoreticians than the city of Greensboro. And no other college was as instrumental in the development and practice of those ideas than North Carolina a and Characterized as a progressive southern city during much of the 20th century, Greensboro was, as historian William Chase stated, a nice, nasty town. Mm. <clears throat> it was the nastiness and stinging hypocrisy of segregation that fueled black protests in Greensboro prior to 1960. But it was the presence of A&T that engaged in vision crafting and the development of race consciousness amongst its students that spawned the city movement on February 1st, 1960. That same spirit of dissent continued to reverberate through the, throughout the campus for much of the decade and earned A&T a national reputation amongst black activists. In a crowded gymnasium on the campus of North Carolina A&T during the fall of 1969, Students gathered to hear Howard Fuller, a young firebrand and nationally known community activist, who stated, quote, we should get the feeling that seemingly exists here at A&T. Fuller exclaimed, quote, students here not only talk, but act. Their rhetoric is that of revolution, a rhetoric of action. Earlier that spring, hundreds of students from across the country flocked to A&T's campus to launch a new student organization called the Student Organization for Black Unity, also pronounced SOGU. Designed to recapture and reimagine the fractured remains of SNCC, the founders of SOGU purposely chose a t because of its legacy of student insurgency and because Greensboro possessed a synergy between students and community seldom experienced in most other town and gown relationships. SOGU was not alone. Founded in the wake of black student protests at Duke University in 1969, Malcolm X Liberation University was the radical outgrowth of a new argument that articulated the need for independent schools that advanced a curriculum explicitly designed to liberate the minds and communities of black people. In its second year of operation, founder Howard Fuller relocated MXLU, Malcolm X Liberation University, to Greensboro, primarily to feed off the activist energies emanating from a The city was also home to the Greensboro Association of Poor People. Founded in 1968, GAP reflected a new conceptual framework in the struggle for liberation that spoke vehemently against class warfare and the exploitation of the disadvantaged. GAP's co-founder, Nelson Johnson, Reverend Nelson Johnson, I might add, was a former SGA vice president at A&T and utilized the resources near campus to construct a formidable organization that was a thorn in the side of the local power structure. As a new phase of the civil rights movement dawned, Greensboro became a pivotal setting for a new brand of mobilization. The first half of the decade was largely characterized by the involvement of clergy-based organizations, student groups, and the old civil rights guard, most notably represented by the NAACP, all of whom directed much of their energies toward the deconstruction of Jim Crow and the pursuit of integration. Moral suasion, direct action, and litigation had been the primary weapons of choice. But by the later half of the decade, debates on mapping out the proper path to liberation have become much more diverse and much more divisive. Younger activists embraced a more confrontational style and openly questioned the younger activists, I'm sorry, and openly questioned the goals and consequences of integration. <clears throat> From pool halls to dorm rooms, black youth shuffled through the ideas of Marxism, cultural nationalism, and pan-Africanism, all the while fixated on the overarching theme of liberation. By 1971, it was clear that Greensboro was, as Bill Chase noted, the center of black power in the South. If Greensboro served as the backdrop, A&T was, most cer A &T was certainly, most, most certainly the hub of insurgency, producing much of the local leadership, providing a steady supply of student volunteers, and serving as a rally point for countless nationally known speakers who often stopped through to encourage the movement in its development. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.